In relation to drug treatment, for example, there is a trial ongoing now of Ambroxol, uh, which is a drug that promotes autophagy. There's a drug trial ongoing now with exenatide, which promotes mitochondria and decreases inflammation. Uh, there is a, an interest in neurotrophic factors like uh, GDNF. There's always been an interest in the possibility that deep brain stimulation can prevent progression, but there isn't uh, any strong data supporting that uh, idea. Uh, and there's also the idea that exercise can be helpful, and uh, that is generally recommended by neurologists these days for the possibility, although uh, real proof is still necessary. At the American Academy of Neurology this year, there was a lot of attention to another uh, oral drug, uh, nilotinib, which has also been suggested to prevent progression. And uh, there's been a lot of attention to this and a lot of controversy. Uh, nilotinib is a tyrosine kinase inhibitor, and it reduces misfolded proteins uh, like alpha-synuclein. Uh, the concept was first introduced by Ted Dawson, but the first clinical trial was conducted at the uh, uh, Georgetown under the clinical leadership of Fernando Pagan. And a couple of years ago, they published a pilot study that suggested nilotinib uh, might indeed be uh, very useful for treating patients with Parkinson's disease. This led then to a clinical trial, a uh, randomized controlled trial that Fernando Pagan and his team ran at Georgetown, which was reported in uh, JAMA Neurology in the early part of 2020. They had 75 uh, patients in the trial, uh, randomized one to one to one to uh, 300 milligrams a day, 150 milligrams a day, and placebo control. The patients were treated for 12 months uh, with a, a three-month uh, follow-up period. What they found in this uh, study, as, as they reported it, was that the drug was largely safe. It did have some side effects, but it was largely safe, and uh, it was primarily a safety study. And they looked at the CSF, and they found a decrease in alpha-synuclein oligomers and uh, also a decrease in hyper-phosphorylated uh, uh, tau. And they thought, therefore, that there was some evidence that nilotinib was actually being useful. Subsequently, uh, at the latter part of 2020, uh, the Georgetown group published another paper in movement disorders with the follow-up of the patients that were in the original study. They had uh, 63 patients, and at this point, it was one-to-one -one, uh, patients who were on 150 milligrams a day versus patients that were on 300 milligrams a day. And uh, these patients were followed another year uh, giving uh, then a total follow-up period of 27 months. What they found is that the patients who were on 150 milligrams a day actually declined, where those that were on 300 milligrams a day uh, remained stable. They didn't improve, but they remained stable. And of course, remaining stable is all you might expect uh, in a drug that would prevent progression. There was, however, a third clinical trial that was also reported at the end of uh, 2020 uh, by Samuni and colleagues reported in JAMA Neurology. This was a multi-center trial and 25 sites. Uh, they recruited uh, 76 patients, and the study was uh, very similar to the Pagan study uh, in which they uh, randomized patients one-to-one-to-one -to -one -to -one to 300 milligrams a day, 150 milligrams a day, or placebo. They followed patients for six months 
with a two-month follow-up period. What they found in their study was that uh, the patients in both groups worsened, and there was no change of any parameters in the uh, cerebrospinal fluid. And of particular interest, there was only 0.2% of the serum nilotinib that could be identified in the CSF. So they suggested that uh, only very little of the nilotinib actually got into the central nervous system. And they concluded that nilotinib was therefore not useful. So this uh, then has become a controversial topic. Uh, is nilotinib useful uh, or not for the treatment? Uh, clearly, it's uh, not a home run, uh, but I think that uh, it uh, has been studied a lot longer by the Georgetown group and uh, their identification that using uh, the 300 milligram dose, not the 150 milligram dose for a long period of time might uh, give some stability. And this might suggest that it would be useful to study the drug more. I'm sure it will be studied more, uh, but uh, you can see how this uh, entity is controversial. And that was the reason for the long discussion at the American Academy of Neurology. 